Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumptions for a Mann-Whitney U-Test in SPSS. The Mann-Whitney U-Test is a non-parametric alternative to an independent samples t-test. So we would use the Mann-Whitney when we have violated one or more of the assumptions for an independent samples t-test. Taking a look at these fictitious data head load in the data view, I have three variables here. I have an ID variable, and there are 50 records in this data set. And then I have a treatment independent variable that has two levels, CBT and treatment as usual. And then I have one dependent variable labeled anxiety, and it's measured at the continuous level. So let's assume that these data were generated from a study that wanted to examine the differences, potential differences between outcomes on an anxiety measure from CBT to treatment as usual, and that all these observations are independent. So first we would look at the independent samples t-test. However, one of the assumptions for the independent samples t-test is that the scores in the dependent variable would be normally distributed for each level of the independent variable. So that all these scores that correspond with the CBT level would be normally distributed and all these scores that correspond with the treatment as usual level would be normally distributed. So to test that we go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and then explore. And you can see we have treatment and that's nominal. We're going to move that over to the factor list list box and then anxiety which is scale over to the dependent list list box. And for this analysis I'm just testing the normality of the dependent variable for each level of the independent. So under statistics I'm just going to leave it the same here. Under plots I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf and add normality plots with tests. And then under options again no changes. Click OK. And you can see we have the output from the Explorer function. And looking at the skewness and kurtosis for the CBT group and for treatment as usual, all these values are in bounds. But if we move down to the Shapiro Wilk, we can see we have a statistically significant finding for the Shapiro Wilk for the anxiety scores associated with the CBT level the independent variable. Now for treatment as usual we have a non-statistically significant finding that points toward a normal distribution there. However the statistically significant finding here for the CBT level that indicates we have violated the assumption of normality. So in a case like this we may choose to use the Mann-Whitney U-test. Now the Mann-Whitney U-test does have assumptions but they're not as stringent as the assumptions for the independent samples t-test. There is no assumption of normality for the dependent variable across the levels of the independent variable. However, there are still assumptions that have to be met. You need to have an independent variable that has two levels, and we have that. Our treatment independent variable has two levels, CBT and treatment as usual. We need to have independent observations, and we do in this case. The dependent variable needs to be measured at the ordinal level or greater. So that's ordinal, interval, or ratio. Or in SPSS, that would be ordinal or scale, because interval and ratio are combined as scale in SPSS. So here we have a scale variable, so we've met that assumption. And then the last assumption is that the dependent variable distributions must have the same shape. So the distribution of scores here for the dependent variable scores associated with CBT and the distribution shape here for the dependent variable scores associated with treatment as usual, these two distributions need to be similar in shape. So we can test that using Explore in a similar fashion to what we did for testing the normality. We'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. 
So we can see that SPSS retains the information we populated from the last time we used the explore function. So anxiety is still in the dependent list list box and treatment in the factor list list box. Under statistics, I'm going to add outliers here. And I'm going to uncheck descriptives. We don't need those for this analysis. Then for plots, then under plots, I'm going to uncheck normality plots with tests and then check off histogram and click continue and there's no changes under options so click OK and we have the case processing summary first if we move down we will see a histogram for the anxiety scores associated with the CBT level and then a histogram for the anxiety scores associated with the treatment as usual and what we're looking for here is that these distributions are shaped similarly. And we can see that, of course, they're not exact, but if we look at both of these histograms, they appear to have a similar shape. There's a negative skew for both distributions, and they generally look similar. If we move down to the box plots, we, we can see that there are two box plots, one for CPT and one for treatment as usual. And what's of interest here is that these two box plots are similar in the way they're structured. It doesn't matter if the values associated with the box plots are different. You can see here that the range is higher for a CBT than the treatment as usual distribution. That's okay, but the structure needs to be similar. So you can see here the top whisker to the top of the interquartile range, which is this rectangle. That is similar for these two distributions. The interquartile range itself is similar, and the distance to the bottom whisker for both of these distributions appear similar. So in this instance, we would say that we've met the assumptions for the Mann-Whitney U test. To conduct the actual Mann-Whitney U, just go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, legacy dialogues and two independent samples and for the test variable list that's going to be anxiety the grouping variable will be treatment and you can see that when we move the treatment variable over into grouping variable define groups comes up click there and in this case CBT was zero so I'll put in zero and group two treatment as usual was one so zero and one Click continue and under options I'm going to add descriptives. Click continue and you can see for test type Man Whitney U is checked off by default. So I click OK and here are the results for the Man Whitney U test. And taking a look at the ranks you can see that for CBT the mean rank right about 27.5 and for treatment as usual the mean rank right about 23.5 and of most interest would be the p-value down here and it's 0.326 so it's not statistically significant so we would say we do not have a statistically significant difference between CBT and treatment as usual on this particular measure of anxiety. I hope you found this video on testing the assumptions of a man Whitney U and SPSS to be useful as always if you have any questions or concerns feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.